Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In this morning's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the challenges and also some resolutions of issues involving working with architecture teams. As a matter of fact, there's an anti-pattern in architecture associated with this topic, and it's called the Witch's Brew Anti-Pattern. Think about all the different ingredients that go into a witch's brew. Well, the witch's brew anti-pattern really is about not having a clear vision and direction in architecture teams. Think of all the different ingredients kind of mixing up. There's no cohesion. There's no cool, you know, consistent story within that witch's brew. And as a matter of fact, the witch's brew anti-pattern of architecture generally produces these kind of architectures that have no clear vision and no clear direction. This is a picture of the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto, Canada. It is deemed the world's ugliest building. And as a matter of fact, if we study this building, you see that there's four parts, most likely four architects. And the architect on the left-hand side said, this is a museum. It's got to be old. And so, so he architected probably this old kind of historical building. Yet, look at the middle piece there, that uh, angled thing. It looks like something actually fell out of the sky from space and like kind of landed right on top of this building. As a matter of fact, there's a building with shingles that keeps going down. And finally, the last the, on, the, on the far right-hand side is some glass. I mean, there's no clear vision or direction. And with the Witch's Brew anti-pattern, if you as an architecture team don't have that clear vision and direction, this is what your architectures will look like. And they're going to be very, very complex and usually won't work. Now, I will say that most of my most valued experiences in architecture have in fact been when I've worked with architecture teams. However, there have also been conflicts. That is reality. Um, most architects uh, tend to be egotistical. Uh, they know the right way of doing things. They think sometimes that there's only one way of doing things. And when you have four ideas, sometimes there's conflict. For example, the problem here is this. Let's say this is our architecture team. And everybody has a different idea for the solution. For example, maybe a simple spring-based web app, or maybe separating layers of an architecture and using EJB and WebSphere. Um, you might have one architect who says, no, 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 you're both wrong. You have to use a distributed architecture here. And sometimes there are architects who don't understand the overall architecture process, wonder why we're all discussing this. Why don't we just start coding? Well, this is half of the problem, but the other half are all the individual internal thoughts about everybody. We may all kind of agree, but yet we don't really agree. But think about really the goal. The goal of architecture teams is to use collective knowledge and experience, both about technology, both about the industry, <clears throat> and different solutions, to arrive at a unified vision for the architecture. Those are the best architectures. However, what happens, not if, but what happens when conflicts occur? Let me offer up an approach. I call it the mediator approach. And so here's how it works. What we do is in our architecture team, we select a mediator. Now, the mediator is not the decision maker. The mediator is there to resolve conflicts when they occur. Now, you select a mediator not be by rank or knowledge, but just some other random technique. Uh, draw, draw straws, uh, draw random numbers, um, play a Texas Hold'em game, uh, play some other kind of game, and the winner gets to be the mediator. Now, what I tend to do on larger projects is I rotate the mediator around every week. So in, that, in other words, uh, Monday morning, we will all get together, play a quick game or draw straws or whatever to decide who's going to be the mediator next. This could be every week. It could be every two weeks. It could be once a project. But let's say we select this person right up at the upper right-hand corner as the mediator. Now, here's the overall process. The first thing we do is that every decision a team member suggests in terms of the architecture needs to be accompanied with a reasonable justification. In other words, let's use an example here. Uh, we've, we need to communicate between two components. And I say, oh, well, clearly messaging would be a good solution here. I think we should use messaging. And one of my other team members on the architecture says, no, 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 no. We got to use REST. 
Well, we can't just throw out opinions. I need to justify cleanly and reasonably why I think messaging would be a better solution. And a lot of times I can probably convince the other architect that wants to use REST. However, if I can't, and they also have a good reasonable justification, that's when the mediator kicks in. And what the mediator does is resolves those conflicts. So the mediator looks at the two examples and looks at the unified vision of the architecture and makes a decision. Now, we all have to agree right from the start on our architecture team that when conflicts occur, we all have to agree what the mediator decides. And so the mediator is looking at the overall vision and direction, not kind of being the policeman, police person for, for everything. So, so the mediator has an additional role, and that's to continually make sure that every team member understands that we have to create an architecture here for our current solution, but really what we have to do is work towards a unified architecture vision for this particular problem, a solution that works in a unified fashion. And by using this approach, we can create the most beautiful architectures in the world. I have used this approach several times and it works fairly well, especially if you make it fun. It creates a very collaborative environment and a very rewarding experience working with an architecture team. So this has been Lesson 16, The Challenges of Architecture Teams. Uh, my name is Mark Richards. Um, please join me next Monday for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday. Thank you.